Hello, it's a sensor company here with a new video. In this video, I'll be discussing and analyzing the Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Online community update, the latest on what's to come this summer and beyond. That was on July 7th, 2022. But yeah, starting off with the vehicle here, I do think this is a new vehicle. Like, yeah, it does look similar to certain vehicles, but yeah, they don't necessarily go into too much of the content that will be coming out in terms of like tangible stuff but yeah it's a lot of like quality of life stuff but i do still think this is a new vehicle here to me the badging is definitely looking like pagasi or like grotty or something like that but yeah i do think it looks similar to like pagasi vehicles currently in the game like the reaper and stuff so i'm definitely leaning towards this being some kind of pagasi vehicle here and then yeah Starting with the first two paragraphs, they don't necessarily really go into anything like all that significant here. But apparently more players than ever are apparently taking the streets of Los Santos, so apparently I guess they're getting all kinds of like new players that weren't on like previous versions, so that's definitely pretty interesting to learn. Didn't expect that people would be having their first experience with the game technically on the ninth generation systems. All that much at least. But yeah. Then some of the juicier stuff starts in like the third paragraph here. But yeah, and apparently in just a few short weeks a new update will be coming. Which is kind of strange wording with a few short weeks because currently there's actually like an 11 like day like event week going on. Which suggests that the DLC should be coming out on like July like 18th or 19th. Probably the 19th like the Tuesday after the event ends since it's on a Tuesday. And as a date update, typically you release like updates and whatnot. So I feel a few short weeks is kind of like suggesting that it's going to be longer than like July 19th, but that's also when like the GTA like minus like subscription ends. So that's kind of weird wording there, but yeah, I do think the update's coming out on like July like 19th. And yeah, it will be on all platforms and will expand upon the careers and the like career builder of executive biker, gun runner, and then like owner. So it seems the stuff tied to those like four branches of like businesses are probably going to be the main things that end up getting expanded throughout some of the like quality of life updates that will be going on with the summer update. And then the most interesting one here kind of for like something pretty new will be a set of contact missions that present an opportunity to be sworn in as a special IAA field operative to investigate a criminal conspiracy definitely sounds pretty interesting could make for some like returning characters because I think some of the characters from like the Doomsday Heist especially were like tied to IA like I think that's with like Michelle from like Grand Theft Auto 4 there's that like ULP like contact so maybe a couple of those characters can come back and maybe like Agent 14 even that could be pretty interesting so maybe that could be a couple of interesting returning characters because it definitely sounds like it's going to be more like story oriented like contact missions similar to like the short trips and like super yacht life missions and some of those i would imagine no doubt well the screenshot for sure of what this is could even go into like the first screenshot here as well for all i know but yeah it will also feature some changes along requested by the community, such as reducing effectiveness of homing missiles and then the countermeasures on the Presser Mark II. So for reducing the effectiveness of missiles, I feel that could either be like the damage output, maybe the missiles would be like weaker missiles where it might take like two like missiles from the Mark II to equal like one kind of of like most other vehicles in the game. It could be something like that. I think they already kind of do something like that with the Invade and Persuade tank where it has like missiles but it doesn't destroy like vehicles on like the first like hit or something. So it could be similar to something with like the Invade and Persuade tank. Or who knows, they might like reduce like the accuracy of the missiles because they're pretty accurate homing missiles, not as good as like the Luxo missiles, but they're definitely some of the more like accurate missiles in the game, not similar to like the Buzzard missiles which are like standard tracking. It's a lot more like accurate than a buzzard missile, but again, not as much as like the Deluxo. So I feel it could be something like that as well. And then a more convenient way to access snacks and armor 
I feel the way they could definitely go about that would already be currently in Red Dead Online. I believe there's like two to like three different like weapon wheels and like one of the wheels in Red Dead Online is like purely like consumables and stuff like that. I could see like a weapon wheel like system similar to what's in Red Dead Online being what they might end up doing for snacks and armor. I feel that would be like the most convenient way they could go about that right there. And yeah, the ability to launch cell missions and invite only local sessions, that's going to be pretty damn huge. I feel like I can definitely add a whole ton of replayability when it comes to like all of the different like business stuff in the game. They don't mention sourcing missions though, which is a bit worrying, but I would assume if they're doing cell missions and sourcing missions too, to be allowed in invite only. I would definitely put them more in line with like very recent content additions such as like the Kyle Perico Heist. That's a very huge one that you can do purely in an invite only lobby. So I'm definitely very excited for that one, especially that would definitely add a whole ton of replayability. Because that was definitely a huge downside to businesses having to be in public lobbies, especially for the sales, though in certain cases, even for like sourcing even. But yeah. And those are just a few of the new improvements apparently that will be coming for that summer update. And yeah, they're listening to player feedback. And yeah, this paragraph here mentions that they'll be increasing like payouts and stuff like that. Which goes more in detail on the one beneath. But yeah, bodyguards, associates, and MC members will see increased payouts which will encourage and reward cooperative play. Now in particular for the MC, I feel it's pretty fine in terms of like the business payouts or something. Like I think when you help like an MC member, you make like 10% or something, up to like $70,000 or something that they make. So you could actually make some pretty decent money with an MC member already, I believe, when it comes to like helping like MC people sell their like businesses and stuff. So I feel that was fine. But the like standard like payout every set amount of time for the bodyguards associate and MC members definitely is pretty low to say the least. So definitely does deserve quite the increase. That should definitely be something pretty great there. And yeah, increased payouts as well for a variety of activities, including races, adversary modes, and select heist finales. Races, I definitely do think that's a very good one to be doing increased payouts for. Adversary modes, honestly, I didn't really feel those needed much of a payout increase because you were pretty much doing that purely for fun, I would say, in terms of adversary modes. Sure, you can say that for races as well, but I feel races are definitely way more competitive, I would say, than like adversary modes. So I feel it was already fine, but still definitely very glad to hear adversary modes will be getting payout increases as well. And then select heist finales, I feel definitely all the regular heists definitely need increased payout saving, not necessarily Felicia job actually because that's like a two player heist, but I definitely think all the four player heist finales for the original heists definitely need payout increases, especially prison break, that one's definitely like the worst heist I would say when it comes to how good people do on it and whatnot. But yeah. And Doomsday Heist, I feel Act 2 is kind of pretty fine already for the, like, finale itself. Though when you do, like, the setups and, like, stuff like that, I guess, sure, Act 2 could definitely use an increase for Doomsday. Definitely Act 1 and Act 3, definitely, I feel, could definitely use some pale increases as well. And yeah, Casino Heist and Kyle Perico Heist, I honestly feel those ones are pretty fine, though, as they are. So that might be some opinions on what I feel like the heist finale is like which ones might be getting payout increases. And yeah, hopefully like contact missions will be another one I get like payout increases. Contact missions is definitely one I want to see and get an increase as well. And then this one doesn't really mention anything all that important either. And yeah, Reddit online now. Not good news, unfortunately, when it comes to Reddit Online all that much. There's definitely a little bit, but not that much. Nothing really important there. But yeah. 
Over the past few years, we have been steadily moving more development resources towards the next entry in the Grand Theft Auto series, understanding more than ever the need to exceed players' expectations and then and for this next entry to be the best it can possibly be. Because of that, apparently they're in the process of making some changes to how they support Red Dead Online. <laughs> so yeah, Red Dead Online is getting shafted for the next entry in the Grand Theft Auto series, which that one at least I could kind of understand. But really they're going to like prioritize an almost a nine year old ass game for Red Dead Online, which is not even four years old yet. Bruh. Nice priority is Rockstar. It should have been Reddit Online. I got the 9th gen version. And uh, update support. I guess they're turning into a one trick pony now, I guess. They're only going to be purely focusing on GTA stuff. Fuck Reddit in any other series, apparently. Pretty sad, unfortunately, there. But yeah. Definitely felt that was going to happen, no doubt, but at least there's some sort of confirmation now that they're not going to be doing much of anything with the game. Because before it was like a wild guess, like, if they were going to bother with it at some point or not. But yeah, this one here just talks about the monthly events, those will be continuing on and whatnot. And then alongside season with special events and experience improvements. Our changes in hands to maintain a healthy down on environment, we plan to build upon existing modes. So maybe similar to like quality of life, like payout, like increases, like maybe new like called R maps and stuff like that, I feel, for existing content. Nothing really crazy, obviously. And then apparently they will be adding new telegram missions though this year, which sounds like it's going to be the only like somewhat significant content addition for the entire year of 2022. Rather than delivering major themed content updates from like in previous years. So yeah, apparently they're going to stop the major like content updates later on. Or like pretty much already did, as it lost like a year after like the Blood Money DLC. That's apparently going to be like the last like major fully downloadable update. It seems. So a very unfortunate circumstance here for Red Dead Online. But yeah, and they apparently will continue to highlight certain like creative efforts in the community. And yeah. Pretty much the rest of it doesn't really go into anything all that much important either. But yeah, that is finally be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed.